Hello everybody, this is Chuck Wigger, State Senator, and today we're going to meet with Terry Johnson. She's the Director of Community Education for School District 622. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Senator Wigger. It's a pleasure to be here. Good, and community education, to me it's all about lifelong learning, and uh, give us your overview of what community education is, and I see we have a visual here yeah, as well. Yeah, you named it, right? There's lifelong learning. You can see all the way from early childhood through senior citizens. Our goal is to try to have something for everyone, and so our staff work really hard trying to uncover those needs and interests and try to be responsive with our programming, and we're always open to more. Uh, more ideas if people don't find something that that works for them so to just give you a short overview we do have programs for uh, families with young children uh, birth to five-year-olds can participate in early childhood family education sometimes called ECFE uh, where families can come together and learn about parenting uh, find out about joys and challenges that they might share with one another and find out they're not alone in some of those challenges with ages and stages of, of parenting young children and I want to just praise that program yeah. and also disclose I was on the original uh, board for community ed in District 622 and uh, a key part of the uh, ECFE program and getting that started and uh, each of our five children went through ECFE and I really liked the learning kits that yeah. would be available to help you as a parent and various skill development interaction with the kids uh, in a free lending library and then there would be the programs where you could talk to other parents just about the, the challenges, the joys, tips about uh, parenting and all about that helping the children be ready for kindergarten. And uh, the parents need to be actively involved and uh, the schools are there uh, if you want to take advantage of that. So uh, that was um, almost four decades ago, wow. back in the, uh, in the 70s, late 70s, starting with our oldest child, Jesse. But um, very good program, and I'm delighted that it continues to grow. So ECFE. Correct. Great to hear about your participation as well. Yeah, we have early childhood screening, which you know is required for kindergarten entrance, but really recommended starting at age three. And this is an opportunity for families to get kind of a snapshot of their child's health and development. And sometimes they might learn about something that might need some further investigation. And so then yes. they have the opportunity for that early intervention and to find out about community resources. And so uh, that's a free opportunity available at, at Beaver Lake. And so we really encourage families to check that out. Great center uh, in Beaver Lake yeah. and, uh, and, and all of our schools are looked at as lifelong learning opportunities. Uh, there's different uh, scope of activities that are provided, but uh, Beaver Lake uh, does an exceptional job in uh, comprehensive programs. Yeah, we have a great uh, universally accessible playground there that we were able to build with a with a matching grant as well. So it's really a nice opportunity for the community as well. So getting that assessment, that can help yeah. uh, the parents, others get an idea as to how the child is doing and then to, to take action if there's an area that is uh, saying we need to do a little more work or check this out, uh, maybe go to uh, uh, the medical doctor, but uh, it's these checkups that will help in determining uh, whether that child's ready for K. Exactly. It's an important step for all families to take as, as soon as possible, really, starting at three mm. or, or four. And, and it's free. It's free. And, and you do your best to get the word out for people. Exactly. Exactly. And so that's a great opportunity for all families. Okay. Uh, also for young children, we have District 622 Preschool, and that's yes. for uh, three to five-year-olds uh, to really get that jump start on preparation for kindergarten socially, emotionally, academically. And what we find is that children just love coming to school, and so it's also just that great instilling the love of, yes. of learning as well. Well, I will share again, this is a high priority for me as a state senator, and. Uh, sponsoring legislation to provide these opportunities for students uh, because we know if we're going to have a very good chance for that student to be ready for K, ultimately graduate and get a, a great job someday, uh, you need to get those seeds 
planted as early as possible. And so having that love of learning start working with the parents is the key. And so that's what we've talked about at the legislature, District 622, and many other districts you know, are implementing these programs. And it does make a difference. It really does. And we really appreciate that opportunity to provide an accessible, uh, affordable opportunity so that okay. there aren't those barriers to pre-K and preschool. Okay. And do you evaluate uh, for those students that have been in early ed, um, what the growth has been in, th in their skills and then maybe going uh, for the, when they graduate eventually or when they're in third grade, different stepping stones to see uh, the impact for students in that program and the likelihood that they graduated? Yes, you know, we do evaluate and we do see tremendous growth from fall to spring in the children. And so we do that whether they're three or four. Yep. And we're still building those programs to, to measure longitudinally, but we have done some of that and it does certainly seem to be making a difference. Great. Yes. In addition to uh, early education uh, with the young, uh, you know, the children, the, the toddlers, and, uh, you, and you also, by the way, I, you can get grandparents involved in these programs as well. Exactly. And you know, others that are involved. But uh, lifelong learning for everyone. Uh, share some of the scope of other activities that are available for viewers. Sure. For people who have school-aged children, we have opportunities before and after school. Our program is called Adventure Connection. Uh, families love it because it's convenient. It's usually right at the school. It's They know that their children are safe while they're away at work. Yes. And kids love it because there's a lot of choice, a lot of high quality activities, field trips, wonderful staff to engage. And so that's a, a wonderful program that's available not only before and after school, but on non-school days and in the summer. In addition, we have youth enrichment, youth development programs for students to explore an interest, uh, maybe develop a hobby, potentially even g move into a career pathway based on some of their exploration. You know, we offer things, everything from STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, mm -hmm. uh, learning language, art, uh, music, drama, you know, the choices are, are endless. And of course, service is a part of that as well and youth leadership. And so lots of opportunities for youth. Uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, grandparents. We also are really trying to focus on some intergenerational programming as well. And yes. so we had a great program this summer called Roots and Sprouts. And so we have uh, three community gardens and at one of them, we had families and older adults coming together to learn about gardening and kind of the science behind it as well as you know engage in some art projects and then of course get hands-on with weeding and yeah. harvesting the the produce and so we we really received some wonderful feedback around that program uh, and so we're we're continuing to try to move into that intergenerational programming as well wonderful yeah and the catalog <laughs> that has many of the other programs available that uh, you know, have any number of opportunities that uh, viewers might want to participate. Uh, maybe the, the kids are grown and, or the, there's not uh, children or grandchildren, but they just want to sharpen a skill, learn a new skill. You know, share some of the variety of options available there. Yeah, there's really any number. Uh, we try to have a, a wide variety of programs because people have a interest in different areas. So some people like to come to us for exercise programs. Mm -hmm. We have job search skill, you know, kind of courses. We have opportunities where people might want to come together with a friend and have an experience like a cooking class or yes. an art class. And so uh, really just our hope is, again, something for everyone and that if people can't find what they're looking for, uh, we're hoping that they'll give us a call so we can look into the possibility of offering such a thing. So really just trying to to have a wide variety and you know provide that lifelong learning that you spoke of earlier. And senior citizens. Correct, exactly. Let's not forget our seniors. We have Gladstone Center where we have weekly opportunities for seniors to come together, get that social yes. connection, as well as some fun activities, cards, bingo, painting, woodworking. And what's uh, considered a senior citizen? You know, it, we call it the 55 plus. Okay. So that's, it's, uh, I could go. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm definitely there. So. Uh, and so it's, it's really open. Um, and of course, we, in addition, we have daytime classes that are yes. held at Gladstone that aren't just for seniors, but 
it often works well for seniors because, because they might have that availability during the day as well. And then we have volunteer opportunities as well. It's so important, yes. having that intergenerational chemistry going. Exactly, and so we've got a Meals on Wheels program that we facilitate. So people can volunteer to be that kind of warm person delivering a warm meal at the midday yes. um, to some people who really rely on that meal to stay independently living in their homes. And okay. so that's one example. We're also really continuing to build on our partnerships within our school district. That's yes. part of our strategic plan. And so we're really going to be working hard this year to identify some community resources that can help us to meet some school needs as well. Great. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention adult basic education as well. We have yes. a, a great program at Harmony Learning Center. I've been there a few times. Yes. And Hats off to everybody. Yeah, there's a great opportunity for our adults in our community, uh, free of charge, to learn yes. English and to continue to learn English, you know, higher and higher levels of English. Um, and they're so motivated, it's to get a better job. Exactly. And, you know, provide additional hope in their lives. And exactly. I really enjoyed uh, visiting with students there. Yeah, students then can go on and study for and take their GED test, yep. Yep. which of course opens doors. Uh, we also have been moving into some career pathways. We have yes. three currently, which again, help people to uh, have, you know, usually an industry recognized credential that they can put on their resume and yes. hopefully open doors to great jobs, either in the IT field, yes. uh, working with children in schools as a paraprofessional or working in the healthcare industry. And so, right. So all great programs available uh, through Harmony and then also at White Bear Lake will have a, a location this, this fall as well. And there's a great deal of cooperation, coordination with you know, the, the cities, with the business, the private sector, the nonprofits, it's working together. Exactly, a lot of collab collaboration and partnerships. I know uh, ABE works a lot with Century and the Workforce Center and so, uh, a lot of great partnerships that make all of this work together well. And this is a program uh, for 622, but many of the districts throughout the state now have implemented this and as well as throughout the country because it's the right thing to do. I agree, exactly, yeah. And, and you work obviously with the school board and it's incorporated into their strategic plan for lifelong learning. Right. Uh, and you have an advisory council. Correct. Tell us about that. Correct. Really important part of what we do, that community voice. And we try to get people, representatives from our different cities that we serve that are part of our 622 community, yes. as well as people who participate in our program so that they can bring that voice to what it is that we do. And we try to have engaging conversations around kind of the future, what we're currently doing, get input, and it's a really important part of community education. Well, we praise all of the uh, persons serving on your community ed advisory board and as well to all the instructors and volunteers that are involved. Uh, any numbers you can share just, uh, just overall about uh, program offerings, number of participants, uh, so quick facts. Yeah, I think the last time I checked, we had about 14,000 people participating in a year in community education. That's non-duplicated, of course. We mm -hmm. hope that we're serving people in multiple ways, yes. multiple programs. Uh, and then that doesn't count facility use, which is something that community education is also charged with, kind of managing that facility use outside of school hours. And so we've got about this is a duplicated number, about 70,000 uh, people utilizing our schools during a, during a year for facility use. Great. So yeah, a lot of programs. I think I neglected to mention aquatics. We have oh, learn, yes. learn to swim programs yes. starting at, I think, six months. Uh, we have driver's education. So again, something for everybody, I think, is available within our District 622 community education. Yes, there's definitely something for everybody. Yeah, I hope so. Again, let us know if, yeah. you're, if we're missing it because we certainly are interested in you know, learning more about our community's needs and yes. interests. And you have a website? We do. It's www.isd622.org. And we'll say that one more time. Sure, www.isd622.org. And there is, you could find community education that way or you can do a backslash community education and find all of our programs and services there. Great, and Terry, what inspired you to become a community ed director? Oh gosh, I just love the uh, opportunity to serve the community, to really work closely in collaboration with our schools. 
uh, and with our community. And I, I love the variety. I love the passion of the staff that I get to work with. Uh, people who are just truly, they believe in the, the benefits of lifelong learning in their particular program areas. I, so I think all of that, just the opportunity to make a difference. And there's specific training uh, programs. Uh, what was your educational preparation? Yes, uh, in order to be a community education director, one needs to get their community education license, their director license, yes. which I have. Um, prior to that, I received my master's degree in adult and community education. Uh, in Scotland, actually. Scotland. Yeah, okay. I, I was fortunate to receive a Rotary Scholarship to study abroad and, and yes. receive that education. And then prior to that, I received my bachelor's degree in, it was called community service. Mm -hmm. uh, it was basically hands-on working with people. Great. Yes. Well, thank you so much for your service, for the outstanding job that's being done. Any concluding words for our viewers? Again, just get involved. There's, I hope, something for everyone. And if, if you don't see what you're looking for, please let us know, and we'll do our best to, to find that. Thank well you. Well said, everyone. Get involved. Terry Johnson, thanks for a job well done. Thank you so much, Senator Weger. Support community ed.